a little bit of time. If you guys want to maybe come up front. And then if there are any questions for these fellows about how they run their businesses for their common good or for how their faith affects it, are there any questions you'd like to ask either one, Tom or Jim? One thing I'd like you to share, if you've got a thought or an experience where it was, it was a challenging experience, but you felt like your faith somehow Give you an idea of what to do in that circumstance, right? Yeah. Um, well, to tell you the truth, we kind of we kind of face that every day because uh, whenever you're in business, um, for so many people in the business world, essentially what happens is the drive for greater success or more money um, can easily overshadow everything else you're doing. So from the very beginning, and I'm very fortunate to have a bunch of leaders who agree with the perspective is what we simply did was we flipped the normal model upside down. So the normal model in business is if you work for me, I don't care what you do outside and I don't care what your belief system is in, just help me grow the business. But we flipped that upside down. So essentially the priority whenever we bring somebody in was faith and family is number one. We need to make sure that you have that right. And then once we follow that, the second priority is education. And we will do everything we can to modify the schedule to make sure that you are not compromising one or two. And then, and only then, when we get those right, will the business follow. And so uh, when I first initiated that and, and introduced that, there were a lot of people um, who weren't used to that kind of a, a presentation or philosophy immediately dismissed it and felt that, that I wouldn't be successful in the long run. Um, what's interesting about that, if you know anything about retail or that whole industry, uh, just drive around the greater Omaha area and you'll see the vast majority of them, almost on a regular basis, if not daily basis, have not hiring signs. In the seven years that I've been open, I've never had to put a no hiring sign. In fact, all of the people, literally all of the people that work for me are referred in from other people who either do work for me now or have worked for me before. And so even though it looked like initially and often ridiculed by people that we got the, we flipped the priorities wrongly where we should have business first, it actually has served us very, very well in the long run to where the people coming in understand who we are and what we're about. And then when they're being interviewed, instead of saying, we'll let you know if we select you, we turn it around and I literally look them in the face and say, now that you know who we are, what our belief system is, do you, do you select us? And by doing those things in what seems to be the backward direction, we've had a lot of success. Um, I actually hired somebody that worked for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was an excellent employee, except in my business, I don't have that freedom. That last night, we worked 13 hours. The day before, we worked 12. I'm 71 years old. My body keeps saying, hey, stupid. <laughs> but uh, that's how it is. And, and that's why we love me because we work too many hours. But a fine young man. And I've never been to a Chick fil A that I, I wasn't impressed with their health and, and felt like I was really special. And they, they do an excellent job of your training. With me, um, I had a man that was working for me. He was a retired guy when I first got started. I started my business. God and I made the partnership. He was a senior partner, and I was the guy that did all the work. And that has saved my tail so many times. And do I have time for two stories? If and they're uh, quick. Yeah. About so five minutes late, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so the first story, uh, a guy that his son played football with my son. My work was really slow. It was a slow time. It was in the winter. He called me up and he said, hey, Jim, uh, my furnace quit working. The motor's bad. It made a terrible noise, and I shut it off. Do you have a motor? I said, yeah. And he said, well, can you bring the motor and come fix my furnace? It's 6 o'clock at night. I'm excited because I'm out of money in my business account and my personal account. And you know, I've already paid for the motor, so I'm, I'm going to make maybe $200, and it's all going to be positive cash flow. Got to his house, went downstairs. 
He said, do you have a motor? I said, yeah, I got a motor. I went downstairs and I spun the bowler wheel. And I looked inside the set screw. So I repositioned the bowler wheel on the motor, tightened the set screw, spun it. Turned it on and everything was fine. And I'm sitting there and my old Jim Abraham said, well, you know, that's probably damaged the motor. It's an older furnace. He's already expecting to buy a motor. But then my senior boss said, you don't need to use that. So I went upstairs and I said, I've got good news and bad news. He said, well, what's the bad news? I said, you don't need to use he said, what's the good news? Or he said, what's the good news? I said, you don't need a motor. He said, what's the bad news? I said, you don't need a motor. <laughs> <laughs> and it was bad news for me. But I took care of it. He gave my name out so many times down the way. Second story, we were doing a, a furnace install. And it was for a home warranty. And you don't make very much money working for home warranty people. And we, we, I wasn't there when the furnace was delivered. I got there a little bit later and the homeowner wasn't there and my helper said, and he's a 70 year old guy, and he said, uh, the homeowner's really mad, he said he scratched her cabinet, he said, I don't think he did that. But she said her dad made the cabinet and Ann made it for him and she's just really upset. So she came home while I was there and I looked at it and it did not look me. And uh, I said, I understand that maybe we scratched your cabinet. Didn't make it a question, did we scratch? I said, I understand you may have scratched your, your uh, cabinet. And she said, yes, my dad made that for me. And, and she's starting her, her tirades, excuse me. If I gave you $300, do you think you could fix it today? Now I know for you know $5.95, I could get some old English and make it go away. I offered her $300. Yes, I mean, it doesn't have to be, I said, no, $300. My helper heard that. He was living. And when I went downstairs and she left again, he said, if I can fix that for less than that. I said, so can I. But every time she looks at that cabinet, she's going to be mad at us. Now, every time she looks at that cabinet, she's going to think, boy, he, they're really good people. <laughs> I went back there six months later to work under air conditioner. Scratch was so there. She didn't even buy any old. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right. My time. Good. Any final questions? Well, you'll get a chance probably to talk with them if you want. And we stay for the reception afterwards. But thanks a lot for being here, fellas.